the RG35XXH is finally out from Anbernic, and I'm ready to take a look. Now, recently, I did take a look at the Mew Mini Plus and the standard Anbernic RG35XX, and I favor the Mew Mini. I've really been looking forward to this one, though, because it has beefier hardware than those two handhelds, as well as it has dual analog sticks and overall a much more comfortable form factor. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and take a look. Picking it up, the first thing I notice is just how light it is. It's actually 6 grams lighter than the standard RG35XX, which is 186. This is 180, and yeah, it does not feel cheap. It just feels well-constructed. The buttons there don't feel mushy either. They have a good press to them, and the D-pad is actually an upgrade over the RG35XX. The shoulder buttons have that nice click to them. That's almost like the bumpers on an Xbox controller. Start and select to have a bit of travel. But on the left side, you've got your volume knobs. You've got your power and reset on the right side. On the top, you've got your I.O., which is really cool. It has two USB-C ports as well as an HDMI out. Rounding out what's inside the box here, you've got your lens wipes as well as a screen protector, which I am just not bothering to install. I've had zero luck with those. And then you've also got a USB-A to USB-C cable so you can charge or transfer data. All right, with it unboxed, we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on. I'm going to let this go in real time so you can see what the initial boot sequence is like and how long it takes. This should be the longest it goes because I'm assuming it's reading the SD card for the first time, but just wanted to show it. And we're booted in. Now this looks just like the RG35XX Standard Edition here, and I did actually try popping in the SD card from my RG35XX into the second slot on the bottom, there are two just in case, and it didn't read it, it didn't recognize it at all, so we're just going to roll with the one card that's included here. Beyond the improved form factor and the dual analog sticks, one of the biggest draws here is of course being able to play PSP games, so let's go ahead and test that out. We're going to start with something that's not too taxing here with Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, which is a remake of Mega Man X for the PSP. And I did have to activate frame skip for it to run well, and you're going to notice that there's going to be a little bit of chug here and there, but overall it's a pretty playable experience. For those curious, it is running PPSSPP, which is a great PSP emulator with a ton of options. Now onto something much more challenging, we're going to do GTA Vice City Stories for the PSP, and as you can see here, there is some skipping and some chugging that's going on, so we're going to have to make some changes like frame skip, and once you enable that, you'll see that the game plays a little bit better. Now that's not to say that it's perfect, there's still going to be some dips as you play the game, but for a $50 to $60 emulator, this is pretty solid. This device also comes with the Sega Dreamcast emulator, so let's go ahead and test this thing out and see how it runs with a game like Soul Calibur. This is right out of the box, and you can see that it's running a little slower, but I'm sure if you tweak some of the settings in the emulator, you can get it running at 60 frames, 100% speed. On an earlier spec sheet, you also saw this has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, and while I don't normally connect these to my Wi-Fi, I did want to try out the Bluetooth, and this one here would not connect to any controller that I tried pairing with it. However, I like this device so much already that I bought a second one, and this second one here had no problems connecting to a controller. And really, once it was connected, I had no problems as far as latency, and really just kind of disappointed that the other one didn't work, because it's a cool feature to be able to plug this into a TV while it's charging and be able to play with the remote control. It's like having a Switch emulator, almost, where you can play a bunch of old consoles and take it on the go when you're ready. Let's test these speakers, though. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Now we're going to go ahead and do a screen comparison between the Mew Mini Plus and the 35XXH, where I favored the Mew Mini Plus last time compared to the standard Ambernic, and I still favor it here. Both systems are using maximum brightness settings here, and again, the Mew Mini just has a bit more depth to the colors, where you can see the Ambernic is kind of washed out. This is even more prevalent when you turn the lights off or dim them, and the colors just look better on the Mew Mini Plus versus the Ambernic. That's not to say the Ambernic is bad, there's no light bleed that I could see, but if the screen is the most important factor to you, the Mew Mini Plus might be the better bet. So in closing, I'm still pretty satisfied with this device here. Sure, there was some quirks with it when it came to the Bluetooth, but the capabilities that this thing has over the other handhelds puts it way above. And nowadays, this thing goes for 50 to 60, and you just get way more benefits like dual speakers here, for instance, or two TF card readers, or on top where you've got two USB-C ports or the HDMI out. There's just more features at about the same price. So my thoughts are, at this price point, this is the one to get. It's better than both of these as far as comfortability and the performance overall, and I'd have to say this is just the one to go for. Let me know what your thoughts are. Cheers!